Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown and welcome social media family to my vlog. Today March the 24th, 2020, the day after the partial lockdown ruling came into effect. I hope everyone is good, everyone is safe, everyone is blessed at this moment in time. So what I wanted to do primarily amidst all of this kerfuffle was to finish off the making of series of the therapy album. But I've since decided not to do so because if you've heard the album, if you're not getting where I'm coming from mentally, I can't explain it to you any clearer than that. And I don't think it's fair for me to go deep into that when me going deep into the album making process was the therapy that I needed, you know? So I've decided not to do that. And I'm sure you can overstand that. But what I will do, um, I am going to give you a technical insight as to how the album was made. And I'm gonna start off with a track that um, demonstrates the whole collaborative process from different sources, not just from producer to vocalist. It's producer to vocalist, to fellow vocalist, to fellow musician. And all of those parties, as it were, organically making the track what it is now, what you hear now. And the track in question is none other than Make Your Move featuring the delightful Rafilia. So I'm gonna go into the making of that for you right now. So how did the track Make Your Move come about? Well, it simply came about by me listening to my brethren Ian Irie um, play his root set on his radio show one afternoon. And I heard this track and my ears immediately inclined to it. And I had my suspicions as to who produced the track, but I needed clarification. So I, I called Ian and asked him, he said, it was Stevie P, which confirmed my suspicions. I linked up Steve and basically asked him if he would be so kind as to let me co-produce that track because I've got a good idea for it. And he said, no problem. What he had done subsequently was send me the actual track that I heard on the radio and send me the stem. Now, what you have to understand from producer to producer is that when a fellow producer gives another producer the stems of the work that he produced. It's it's a tremendous gesture, no matter how you look at it. I felt honored to be entrusted with that. So as a result, I decided to get straight to work with the track. So first things first, I wanna get you guys accustomed to how my ears basically heard the project and how the project manifested from the time of me receiving the stems to the finished product. So. When he sent me the stems, he sent me the original rhythm alongside it as well. And this is how the rhythm sounded when I heard it on the radio. Right, so that's what I heard. And immediately I just gravitated to it. It was like magnet to steel. So within the concept of how Stevie produced it, I totally embraced that. But what I wanted for the track was for it to have a more, 
a more commercial feel rather than a, a dubby feel to what Stevie had basically treated the rhythm. So there were certain things within it that I could have just done without, um, to be fair. Uh, one of which was, I think you can guess, it was the trombone. Now, the thing about me is that I love to use real horns. It's either real horns or no horns. You know what I mean? But if, if, if it's a necessity to use keyboard horns on the basis that the horn player that I want to utilize on the track is just not around, they have got to be some dang good programs for that. You know what I mean? So I just tend to be in the, if in doubt, use a real horn player and done, you know, because it's worth, it's worth the session fee to pay a horn player to play. So the trombone had to simply go. And even if I wanted to use it, I couldn't use it because the effects were bounced onto it anyway and you can't get rid of something that is actually recorded and sealed within the WAV file of the track. So. I don't get me wrong, in the context of how it was produced, you know, it, it works, but for what I wanted, it wouldn't work for what I wanted because I hear the track in a, in a totally different way. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so I got rid of that. And also I got rid of the snare, and which was this. Yeah, you know, I've got enough realistic snares to be going on with, do you know what I mean? So I don't really need that either. And the funny thing is, was that I didn't even use any snares in the final mix. Okay, so going track by track, I'm gonna play you the untreated version of the track and then play you the treated version of it just to give you a sense of what was done to it. So here we have the hi-hat. Muddy and dirty, I think you'll agree, okay? So I decided to take off some bottom end and give it a lighter sound, you know? And it can be argued that I could have taken off some more bottom end of the hi-hat. But for me, it was like, that would that would be cleaning too much of the seasoning of the track that gained my attention in the first place. It might be a small thing to some people, but it's, it's, it's a big thing for me. Right, the second track, which was a track that I actually recorded onto the rhythm track which was the uh it was the percussion audio and i decided to record all of the percussion pan them and bounce them all onto the one track just to save time just to be efficient so you're gonna hear congos tambourine shakers i think it's around five different percussive instruments so with the hi-hat you're gonna hear this much treatment to it okay okay so there's that now we've got the rim shot bypassed here's how it sounded with the rim shot raw bit harsh right so what I've done took some bottom end of that Go. Just made it sound lighter. Yeah. Okay. Right, so with the kick, the good old kick, right? I this is how it sounded untreated. And let's just see the insert that I used. Equalizer. So it was a secondary EQ that I put. Okay. 
Okay. So here it is treated. A more warm, heavy, heavy kick. Yeah. Okay, so you got that. And then um, the crash, didn't, don't really need much on that. Just thin it out. So I added, I added the crashes on myself to give an essence of space as well. Because what I found was that um, with the hi-hat, it was literally just and it was all on a certain level. So I took some some of the hi-hat, brought it down, um, and basically created a break as well to give a sense of, of a live feel, as to a natural live feel. Um, so that's what I did. Didn't really put them in too much places, but when you hear the omission or when you when when it's removed, you notice that. Next up, uh, we have got another effect that I put on there, which is basically the rim shot reverb, with a rim shot long reverb, which was kind of strange because it's usually the snare. When you do a roll, you hit the snare. But I decided to use a very verby rim shot, which kind of just gave the track a whole different flavor again. It's simple, but effective. So here we go. <laughs> So it still it still retains the dubbiness of it. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's what I basically done with it. And it features it features across the track. Right, another thing I put the next track was the roll. And I literally just took one one sample of a roll and cut it and just timed it to fit um, to fit the tempo. I know you can basically time stretch it and what have you, but I'm, I'm just old school when it comes to shifting stuff and what have you, you know what I mean? Here's a roll. Yeah, let's go again. And that serves as the intro as well. So when you listen, when you listen to the intro, it's the same roll with a bit of percussion to introduce it because with the original track, it just went boom, 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 boom. I didn't want the person to be surprised into listening to the track. Here's a roll that actually starts the track. Just gonna play a little bit of that. Yeah. Okay, so next up, these are the stems that um, Steve provided. So the last one, two, three stems. Those were stems that I basically played within the track. So we have got the Hammond organ, which he provided, which is... So that's, that's the Hammond organ untreated. Now, um, we're going to feature the organ as well, um, which untreated sounds like this. With that organ that he provided, um, I mean, normally, if, if I was to play an organ bubble, I'd play 
both hands on the same track. But people do it in different ways. And with this, it had some reverb on it, but it didn't hurt the track. So, in fact, it enhanced the track. So I had no problem working with that and keeping the original reverb effect that was basically based on the track. So, to put the hammer organ in there as well, we've got... Okay, so you got that. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually move up a stem in chronological order. Reason B is going to make sense to you um, as to why. So, now... I'm going to feature the piano track and I'm going to give it to you untreated, raw, undiluted, straight, not chia song. So here it is. That's untreated, yeah? Okay. Here we go. Treated. Not much, very subtle, but all in line with what's going on. Okay, so we got that. So next up, we have got, um, <laughs> we have got some little flourishes that I actually played um, to complement the piano because all what was happening was that it was just being played straight and I just needed some how can I explain it um, just a little nuance that's it I wanted to put some nuance on the on on the piano so this this is what I added to it so I'm gonna take out the piano track and play you what I put just that and it was a, there's some other bits as well and it goes that's it that's all I put so when you put that and the piano together it sounds a little something like this one two Gives it a little kind of, you know, little kind of, <laughs> a little kind of vibe, little nuance, as I like to call it. Okay. Now with the piano track, I had to take down some of the chords because some of the chords are played really heavy, and they stick out like a sore thumb in the piano track. So I took some of them down and just kind of leveled it off. Okay. So next up is the rhythm guitar. Play you it untreated. And the funny thing is, with the raw file, you can hear a little bit of ring. Which I thought initially would kind of hurt the track, but it, it gives it a warmth and a flavor as well. Do you know what I mean? So I was happy to use that, not a problem. And here it is, treated. I just thinned it out a little bit, but I still want to keep the... Okay, 
So there's that. Right. So next up, we got the bass. And here is the bass with the drums. First of all, untreated. So let me just take off the drums for a second so you can hear. Keyboard bass. So what I wanted to do was to give it a little bit of warmth. Here it is. I'm going to give it untreated again. Listen. You can hear that. You can, you can actually picture the fingers playing it. So here's, here it is treated now. Three, four. That's a good sign when, 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 when my furniture starts shaking, you know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. Right. So let me put in the drums with it. Right, so it's it's got a different sound but the same sound but more cleaner and it's coming from a different concept again you know what i mean so with the original track you can play that you can play that in a roots dance you know what i mean and it, and it has the desired effect right but also with this it's, it's got a more commercial sounding vibe even though it's it's still the same track and it's a dubby track in essence so the mixing of the track was very important to kind of put that across you know what i mean so this was an effect that i actually put on while I was using my old computer. I call it a guitar whale, and here it is. Here it comes again. Okay, I'm gonna give you the inspiration just for that riff alone. There's a tune by Janet Kay um, called um, Imagine Imagine that. Imagine a thing like that. Ooh, right back in the face you slap. I can't sing that high this time of the morning. But that was the inspiration. Just that So I kind of borrowed a little artistic license from that tune. So bless your heart, Janet. Thank you so much for that. But I just wanted to kind of give that vibe as well. Yeah, so that done the trick. And it kind of gave it, gave it the same effect as Janet Kay's Imagine That gave me you know, my head spears, you know what I mean? So I just wanted to recreate that and pay a little homage to that as well. Right, so let's put everything together, what we've got here. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna come on to Patrick Matix, home front. A great dream, love him for life, man. Not only is he a great musician, but he's a great producer as well. Make some really cutting edge cutting edge music. When he came in to do the session, I played him the track and I just said, listen, just play what you feel. Just play what you feel. So when, when he heard this, this is, this is what he, this is exactly what he did, right? He listened to it, he goes, 
So listen, just go in, go into the booth and just play that thing, man. So he played, he played. <laughs> so he played the riff, and it's the riff you all know as this. <laughs> So you see it all kind of coming together, right? So not only did he play that, he played some other riffs as well. And to be honest with you, um, I don't think they, in fact, let me, um, let me play, let me play some other riffs that, that Patrick had played. And I made an executive decision not, not to feature them because they were kind of getting a bit too busy in other tune. So I think these are these are the these are the horn. I think these are the horn lines. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay. So let's just take it back a bit. Right. So it was really it was really this line, and I love the line, but. I just thought it was just over egging the pudding, you know what I'm saying? So I just left it. But you know, who knows? For a remix, it can work. For an instrumental, it can work as well, you know what I'm saying? So it's all good. Yeah. So, so that was that. Okay. So what else is there? Uh, so basically, it was just. My harmonies, um, which consisted of, let me just take out all of the piano. Uh, just leave the bass. Okay, so my harmonies were. And then I just stacked them with. Make your move. And the rest, as they say, you know, barring my performance and um, Rafida's vocal performance, is what you hear now. Um, Rafida came in and she done her thing, and I think there's, I think there's only one harmony that she did. Uh, yeah, Rafida's out. Right, which, it, which it only comes in one part of the tune, which was um, it was paying homage to Ziggy Marley and the Melody Makers as well. And um, I like putting a little bit of ad libs that pays homage to the artists that influenced me. So here it is. <laughs> And that's it. That's basically it. Barring my vocals, barring Rafinha's vocals, you already know how they sound. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was how Make Your Move was made. So I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by, taking in the vibes, taking in the technicality of the things. And um, thank you for watching. And with that, I want to bid you adieu for now. And as always, you've done another cool people. Please abstain from foolishness. I'm out of here. Magan. Laters. Abstain from foolishness.